Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are working with percent, decimal, and fractions. We're going to be converting the heck out of them. Let's get started. We will do percent to decimal and decimal to percent, decimal to fraction, fraction to decimal, and finally we will look at percent and fraction. Let's get started. First off, when you're converting a decimal to a percent, all you need to do is multiply times 100 or you can move the decimal two places to the right. Conversely, if you're converting between a percent to a decimal, you would do the opposite of those things. Either divide by 100 or move the decimal two places to the left. So let's look at some examples of that. I want you to try this out. Convert this decimal to a percent. Either multiply times 100 or move the decimal two places to the left. Up to you. What did you get? If you multiply times 100, you'll get 23. If you shift the decimal two places to the left, it would start, or two places to the right, I'm sorry, it would start here and move one and two. And you would get it to 23 as well. So 0.23 is 23%. Now if you're given a percent, like this, 15%, and you're asked to convert that into a decimal, you can either divide by 100 or move the decimal two places to the left. This is what that would look like. 15 divided by 100 is 0.15. If I'm moving the decimal to the left, we have to remember that when there's no decimal listed, it appears right here, and we would move it two places, one, two, so that we would have it again as 0.15. I want to cover real quick two tricky examples of this. If you're converting 245% into a decimal or converting 0 0.036 into a percent. So if you've got a bunch of zeros or you've got some missing spaces or you've got a percent that's over, um, over 100, what I recommend is that you use the dividing or multiplying times 100. All right, so this would be my recommendation. Start with 245 and divide by 100. Wherever the decimal lands, be good and done. Um, this way you'll avoid the confusion of where the decimal goes or filling in blanks, missing um, spaces with zeros and stuff like that. However, you can shift the decimal. It would shift two places, so it would start here and go one, two. So it will still work out to shift the decimal two places to the left. When we're converting a decimal into a fraction, you would have this situation um, where you again multiply times 100 or, as you see here, we would take our decimal and shift it one, two places to give us 3.6%. The next part is decimals and fractions. When we're working with decimals and fractions, we need to remember place values. So, for example, this is the tenths place, this is the hundredths place, and this is the thousandths place. When you remember that, you'll be able to set these up really easily, and I'll show you how in just a second. When you are working with from a fraction to a decimal, all you need to do is divide. That's it, really. It's pretty straightforward. So let's do an example. If I had this 0 0.111 and I was asked to convert it into a fraction, I would read it as 111 thousandths. And remember that the third place value here is the thousandths column. When you do that, you can just write it out now and know that it's a fraction of 111 over 1,000. Pretty straightforward. This is another example. Why don't you try this one out? 0 0.12. Write that as a fraction. If I were to read it, I would read it as 12 hundredths, or I would remember that the 2 is in the hundredths column, and that is 12 over 100. All right. Now, if you ever get a situation like this, and you have a common factor, you can simplify this um, fraction to its lowest terms. All right, we always like seeing fractions in lowest terms, so there we go. Now, if you're given a fraction and you're asked to convert it into a decimal, it's division. 
7 divided by 8. So we would write it like this and say, how many times does 8 go into 7? Well, 0. It doesn't. So now we have to add a decimal and then ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 70? And then we have to add the decimal on the top as well and solve using um, long division. 8 times 8 is 64. Subtract. Add another 0. Bring it down. How many times does 8 go into 60? 7 times. That gives us 56. And then we subtract again. Add another 0. Bring it down. How many times does 8 go into 40? 5 times. And then we finally get a 0 at the end. And that will give us our decimal. 0 0.875. So you can use long division with decimals like that. Um, a great tool for it as well is to grab a calculator and, and just plug it in. Definitely um, using a calculator to check your work with, with decimals like that is, is something that um, is a helpful tool. In our final section, we're going to talk about percent to fraction. Um, when you're changing a percent into a fraction, what you'll do is first change the percent into a decimal and then the decimal into a fraction. Or, you remember that percent means out of 100. Okay, so we'll talk about that. The other way, if you're going a fraction to a percent, is that you'll go fraction to decimal and then decimal to percent. So we can kind of see that, that this is a combination of all the skills that we've done already. Let's take a look. Percent to fraction. If I have this 80%, I know that that means 80 over 100, or 80 per 100. I could change the percent into a decimal and then, um, and then the decimal into a fraction, or I can just put it over 100 and then remember to simplify it down to four-fifths. So percent to fraction tends to be pretty quick. Here's an example. 5%. Try that one out. Try writing that as a fraction. Here we are. Did you do it? 5% is 5 out of 100. That's it. Percent means out of 100. 5%, 5 out of 100. And then if we simplify that, we'll get 1 out of 20. Pretty straightforward. Percent to fraction. Put it over 100. Simplify if you need to. The other one, of course, doing a fraction to a percent, requires that we go fraction to decimal, decimal to percent. It's got two steps here. So if I was given 1 fourth, I would start out by doing some division and simplifying this down to 1 fourth is equal to 0 0.25. Then I'm going to convert that decimal into a percent by multiplying it times 100. So 1 fourth is equal to 25 percent. There's some extra steps here, but it's all steps that we've covered previously. So quick recap, we did talk about percent to decimal, decimal to fraction, and then percent to fraction being a combination of all of those. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.